Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about political culture and political ideology. Um, it's always a touchy subject, but we're more looking, trying to be able to analyze um, why cultures uh, have certain types of political um, cultures that go along with their societies and why ideologies actually form. First of all, a couple of definitions. Number one, <clears throat> political culture is basically the collective attitudes and values and beliefs about a lot of things regarding politics. So for instance, what should the role of government overall be in society? What are the rights of the individual citizens of a state? And, it, and what's the extent to which the citizens actually control the aspect of policy making? And of course, political culture actually uh, happens over uh, a longer period of time. And it's really focused around what are the behavioral norms of that culture, of that society regarding politics, and ultimately, who exercises power and how much power should be they be ultimately given? Now, what does you know, the political culture include? All kinds of things that happen within the state. So your nationality, your identity, you know, the idea of a, a shared experience or, a, or an individual experience, you know, everything that kind of comes at you, all the different variables, that's what makes up the political culture that is out there. It's not just like, you know, the, the, the politics of a certain, you know, political party or a certain type of government. It's everything out there that kind of comes in and it, it, it influences how you believe politics should actually work. A lot of it has to do with Maslow's hierarchy. You know, your more materialist values are going to be your poor societies with, with um, poor uh, economic conditions and so your political culture is going to be different than if you're in a post-materialist society where um, a lot of my basic needs are met so it's not like you don't have political culture you just have a different type of political culture that revolves around things like self-esteem and status and ultimately the, that idea of the desire to become the most that you can actually be um, when you're in a place like nigeria you know safety and physiological needs are going to be part really ingrained parts of political culture and they're not going to really care as much about things like civil rights and civil liberties if they can't get food or they keep dying at the hands of Boko Haram or their own military. Okay, uh, Now, you develop a lot of this political culture and political identity through the process called political socialization. That is the process of learning politics and, and you know political beliefs. And of course, there's a lot of influences on individuals. You know, whether you're wealthy or poor, middle class or blue collar or white collar, what's your education? You know, how far do you go? What about the law that is around you, the media you consume, the geographic area you are in, your ethnicity or race, your gender, the kind of friends that hang out with you, your religion, and obviously your family. And in fact, the number one driver of political socialization is actually going to be the family. It doesn't mean you're going to be exactly like your family but they definitely have the ability to politically socialize you. And you're probably going to carry on some of the political culture that is going to be similar to what your family actually believes. Now, when you're in an authoritarian regime, the government becomes much more involved in trying to teach you about the politics and political beliefs that, of course, drive their agenda. So when we talk about you know, all of these you know, issues that influence you know, uh, political society and the political socialization of an individual, if we're in a political country like China, then the Chinese Communist Party is just going to dominate all these things. Either they're going to be uh, co-opted or it's going to do it through oppression and force and propaganda and cult of personality and everything else until basically, hey, guess what? Your political socialization is driven by the Chinese Communist Party. So you're going to believe what they give you now, if you have access to things like the internet, so if you're in Iran uh, or Russia, you can see that political socialization starts seeping into your values because you can see what else is going on in other countries. But in a place like China with the Great Firewall, you know, you're basically going to be given for the most part what the government gives you, and you're gonna that's going to really impact your pol politics and political beliefs. Now, eventually, those that political socialization creates a political ideology. And the an ideology is a set of values and beliefs about what the goals in government and politics actually are. And this is where you get your, all right, we're in the center, we're kind of moderate. If you go farther left, you become more, quote unquote, this is politically liberal. And then, you know, to the far left is communist. To the right, you're more conservative 
or if you go too far right, you become more fascist. All right. And <clears throat> this is like people's over, you know, some, everybody fits on this kind of spectrum somewhere. Now, this can also be influenced by politicians and they, and some of the more, you know, popular, haha, way of doing it is a, a concept known as populism. So we're, we're going to figure out what the political ideology is of the general public. And we're going to tap into the, the emotion of that public and, and the, the ordinary person in society and pit that person against the position of what are considered the elites of society. And you will see politicians do this all the time. Let's get you really emotional. I'm going to really address the needs of the ordinary people. And I say ordinary because there's always an agenda for every politician, even a populist. And then we're going to put them against the elites, whoever the elites might be there. And, you know, it's probably going to be political opposition or elites are people that are wealthier or maybe they're in a certain class, like they're the educated elites or the academics or the intelligentsia or the tech bros, the tech bros, as they are known. You know, so you're just trying to pit the common people against the elites. And so, uh, and again, uh, people like AMLO definitely is a populist. Uh, and, um, if we want to talk about populists in the United States, Bernie Sanders is a populist, Elizabeth Warren, Donald Trump, um, Rand Paul. These are people that say, like, I'm with you, the ordinary person. Uh, we're going to get, we're going to get those guys. Those guys are bad. They're the elites. They're the establishment, that kind of thing. Now, now, when we look at political ideology, we actually want, don't want to do a left and right spectrum. We're going to get a little deeper into it, and we're going to do a, what's called a political compass. And a political compass measures a few things. Okay, number one, a political compass moves your like measures your ideology based on what you think government should be more like in terms of freedom. Um, more, people that think the government should be in more control of people's lives they drift towards authoritarian up here, like the less free, the government's gonna tell you how to do things. People that um, believe the government should be less involved in people's lives, they're gonna drift towards being a libertarian, somebody who believes that the government should be less involved in people's lives and there should be more individual liberties. Then on the left-right spectrum, we have the economic views. Um, people that drift towards the economic right, believers in free markets, that individuals should be making economic decisions. Um, people that drift towards the left are going to be more collective. They're going to be people that believe that you make economic decisions based on a, on a group think or the ideas of the, the, the general consensus of the population. Now, there is an end, like, you know, political ideology for each of these areas. Um, individualism is the idea that um, government should be very, very little involved. We're going to be down here. They're economically free and politically more free. The people are just going to make their own choices. They're going to get the consequences of those choices. In the United States, this is going to be like the traditional libertarian party, um, conservative libertarians, that kind of thing. When we get uh, farther up here to where the government does have a little more influence, then you're going to get your neoliberalism political views. Um, you're going to have still economically right but that the government's job should be getting out there, protecting people's freedoms, that they're going to be, have the right to make their own choices in terms of production and consumption. When we get more left, libertarian left, you start to get the social democrats. This is going to be your um, Western European style social democrats. Um, and these are people that believe that the government should do something to create a more equal and collective society. But for the most part, the community should be actually creating that collectivism. It's not really the government's job to get in there and be overall dominant. Way up here at the top, uh, the right-leaning authoritarian is uh, fascism. This is where the government's job is to legislate both morality um, rules and um, doesn't necessarily always make the you know, economic decisions, forced economic decisions, but definitely moral decisions. And then over here on the left, you have communism. Now, communism is, remember, the state's going to control um, all factors of production. The state's going to control and make a lot of decisions based on production and consumption. And they're going to dictate you know, the rules and mores of overall society. Okay. Now, remember that um, the farther left you get is this idea of the, uh, the ideologies believe that there needs to be more social and economic equality. That's kind of like the end goal if you're moving 
farther left to the right um if you're up here then you're like the government needs to enforce um economic free market uh goals but also morality but when you get down here to the libertarian right that the, it's really the citizens choices and they're going to you know be driven towards the consequences that they make a bad choice the government's jobs not to you know bail them out of, of bad decision making um now when we're uh taking a look at uh you know what the what the primary job of these um, ideologies is going to be is that when you're an authoritarian right you, the, the government basically is going to legislate morality um, when over here on the libertarian or the authoritarian left uh, the government's job is to um, uh, legislate a collectivism it's to, that everybody is got, we're gonna the government is going to make everybody equal um, when we get over here into the uh, libertarian left, the government's job is to uh, make sure some there's like somewhat equality, but for the most part, the community is going to create equality. The collectivism is going to come from the culture of the community, and the libertarian right is going to be that there's basically you know economically and politically that it's going to be the, a, a citizen's choice, and they're going to get the benefits and consequences of that choice. Okay, so we have all these political ideologies having to do with government freedom and less freedom. Um, we have your economic collectivism and economics more derived around the free market.